We present a case from the Hospital Sotero del Rio in Santiago, Chile, in collaboration with the University of Pittsburgh Trauma Center. Hemostatic balloon tamponade in complex liver trauma. My name is Nicole Rykar, presenting on behalf of Drs. Pablo Adolino, Juan Pablo Ramos, Analia Zinco, Pablo Achura, and Juan Carlos Puyana. This is a case of a 32-year-old male who presents with a single gunshot wound to his right upper quadrant without any obvious exit. Given the location of the wound, the team expected liver injury. He was hemodynamically unstable in extremis. His airway was secured. The pertinence of his primary survey are as follows. On EFAST exam, he was noted to have a right-sided hemonumothorax. He was in hemorrhagic shock. He was minimally responsive, suggesting cerebral hypoperfusion, and he was not moving his lower extremities concerning for a spinal cord injury. He met criteria for all four points on the assessment of blood consumption score. He had a penetrating trauma mechanism, his heart rate was over 120, his systolic blood pressure was less than 90, and his FAST exam was positive for both intraperitoneal and intrathoracic fluid. A massive transfusion protocol was initiated and he was taken directly to the operating room. His abdomen was opened to reveal one and a half liters of blood and profuse bleeding from segment five of the liver. A Pringle maneuver was performed and the liver was packed in an attempt to slow the rate of bleeding. Because of the bullet trajectory through the diaphragm, his right chest was opened with an anterolateral thoracotomy. You can see the team removing blood from the right chest and retracting the lung, exposing an injury to the right lower lobe of the lung. Here, Dr. Ramos provides compression of the liver through the right chest, while Dr. Adelino provides compression of the liver through the abdomen for momentary hemostasis. Let's take a moment to review our findings. This patient has hemoperitoneum and right hemothorax. There's a projectile injury traversing liver segment five through liver segment eight. The bullet traverses the right diaphragm. It traverses the right lower lobe of the lung and it is lodged in the spinal cord. His most immediate life-threatening problem is uncontrolled hemorrhage from a long, narrow tract in his liver. The team opted to address this with the long and narrow Sengstock and Blakemore esophageal balloon. Here, Dr. Adelino exposes while Dr. Ramos feeds it through the injury tract, opening in segment five and pulls it out distally through segment eight and into the right chest. The liver is then again packed with laparotomy pads, both in the chest as well as the abdomen. The first phase of damage control surgery is now complete with a temporary skin only closure of the chest and a bagoda bag closure of the abdomen. Now transitioning into phase two of the damage control surgery approach, 
The patient was taken to the intensive care unit where resuscitation was continued with improvement of his hemodynamics, a CT angiography was performed. Here we can see the Sengstock and Blakemore tube on the CT scout film. On the arterial phase of the CT, you can see there is blush or an area of contrast extravasation. In the venous phase of the scan, however, you can clearly see the outline of the Blakemore tube and balloon, and there is no evidence of contrast extravasation. The balloon was clearly effective in stopping venous bleeding and slowing the rate of arterial bleeding, allowing for hemodynamic improvement. At this point, the interventional radiology team was activated and he was taken to the angiography suite. A wire was advanced into the right hepatic arterial circulation, which was then embolized. In damage control phase three, he was taken back to the operating room where the balloon was deflated to evaluate for bleeding. As expected, there was no further bleeding around the balloon. The team performs intraoperative ultrasound that does show intact vasculature in the affected segments and a thrombosis of the portal venous system in the affected segment, consistent with a successful balloon tamponade effect. A cholecystectomy is performed, followed by intraoperative cholangiography through the cystic duct and shows an intact biliary ductal tree on the left but the right anterior and right posterior ducts appear to be compromised. The team opted to manage this conservatively. Drains were placed in the cavity and around the liver. The Blakemore tube is removed. There is no further bleeding from around the cavity the chest and abdomen are closed. Unfortunately, the patient developed a high output biliary fistula over the next week. A CT scan showed ischemia to liver segments 6 and 7. A partial hepatectomy was performed resecting these areas of necrosis. The patient tolerated it quite well and was discharged to neurologic rehabilitation 27 days after his injury. This patient received a total of 34 units of blood, 37 units of plasma, 6 pools of platelets, and 4 of cryoprecipitate. The vast majority of the products were administered within the first 24 hours. For key takeaways from this case, first, we recommend that all liver trauma is approached as vascular trauma. Second, initiate a massive transfusion early if you suspect a major liver injury. The Blakemore tube is specifically indicated for tamponade of blast expansive penetrating bullet tract injuries. These injuries to the liver are best managed by balloon tamponade. Finally, complex liver trauma often requires a multimodal approach beyond the operating room, and angioembolization may be necessary to control arterial bleeding.